welcome back to Revenge Garden. So today is the final um, day of the series, apart from Sunday's Q&A, but as far as I planned out material to learn off of is concerned, we're done. And uh, I thought, considering it's Friday, I'd talk about food storage. Now, uh, food storage is quite a big one if you're going to be uh, try to be self-sufficient and grow your own produce because there's no point trying to grow produce if it doesn't last long but equally you don't want it to perish you know you want it to taste good not deteriorate in flavor so there's many different ways you can store uh, produce through the winter or even just short term like if you produce something now and you want to eat it in two days time you know and store it. So I've got one, two, three, five again different methods of storing. Well, six, tell a lie. We'll start with the six because I've just thought of it now, which is on counters. So if you put a cucumber in a fridge, the cucumber thinks it's going into a frost. So all the sap out of the cucumber will run back towards the tip and out. So you lose a lot of flavour and water and that's how your cucumbers go all wrinkly in the fridge. If you keep them on the countertop, they don't go so wrinkly so fast. Same as tomatoes. Tomatoes keep their flavour better out on the countertop and they last longer than the fridge. But as far as overwintering stuff is concerned, you've got many different solutions. So the first one is below ground. Now I don't have below ground storage systems in place yet. Um, I'm hoping to bury a 45 gallon drum this year at some point to put some potatoes in uh, or even a 35 gallon, whatever I can get my hands on really and I'll just dig a big hole and I might put a container on top of it to make it look a bit nicer um, and then that'll be a bit of a root cellar so underground you've got the ambient temperature it's colder down there in the winter so it keeps your veg nice and cool you don't want them to get too hot, but you, you know it's balanced in the winter. Um, if it freezes below ground in a, in a box, wouldn't freeze that hard if you've had straw over the top of it in winter, or hay, or any mulch. Um, and it can keep potatoes going for a long time. So you know, we used to have potato stores, which were just little sheds underground or little root cellars. Um, I remember I've been in a few and they, like stone into the, into the, like here now you could do into the bank uh, under your field, you could, I'm not going to, but you could do like a underground root cellar like that that you could walk into. So that little barrel underground, I'll just sink it in and I'll put paper sacks with the potatoes in and that way any excess moisture will be absorbed by the paper. I'll also um, make sure the potatoes have cured beforehand so that means laying them out for a day or two for the skins to toughen and the mud to just go drier because you don't want them damp because they'll start to rot. Containers are another way of storing produce. Now I'm doing that at the moment I've got a few potatoes I've just bunged in a, in a bucket um, what I mean by that is I've dug a hole in the soil bucket, the growing bucket, that I've grown some of the potatoes in, so I've brought three containers of, of potatoes into one by digging a hole, putting all the potatoes in and burying it. So the potatoes still think they're underground. So they keep at a nice ambient temperature. The rain keeps them sufficiently damp. I don't need to cure them because they're quite happy under there and it just means that whenever I need potatoes now I just go out and pick those potatoes up and I'll use them. Um, in the shed, that's another good one. I use um, some bins in the shed, plastic bins, and I put paper, newspaper at the bottom and newspaper over the top of the food and that just acts as a, like a moisture sucks up all the excess moisture and I 
cure any veg that's going in there, tip it in and then just leave it. And over winter I had all my veg in them and I only lost one potato to rot. And that's it. It kept well all the way through until March. And that's when I started to run out of potatoes, March, April, end of April actually, no start of April, that's it. So if I'd have had another two weeks worth of potatoes, I could have started my new potatoes. Um, but they weren't quite ready. Hello. Little wasp. Um, freezer and fridge, they're another good way of freezing and storing things short term. Um, freezer I done spag bog sauce last winter and we only ate the last one last week. That's a long time of having spag bog sauce once a week say and it, it, it ensures that we have a taste of summer and deaths of winter but it also prolongs that season like I'm, I've probably had my homegrown tomatoes now every week of every year these the last two years then but you know get the idea I've been able to eat homegrown tomatoes at least once a week now I'm getting into that stage where I'm gearing up to be eating them every day and getting fed up with them by the end but I'm really looking forward to them at the moment so you know you, you come into those things of seasonality of yes the tomato itself isn't growing but I've still got the fruit in them freezer that I could do stuff with or I can pre-make it into sauces and freeze it and then it's a really quick meal because you can just defrost the block of you know we put them in container like containers tip that out and defrost it and then get a bit of pasta a bit of mint and you've got a meal sorted 20-30 minutes and you've got a quick, quite a fast meal that's really tasty fridge then you can store things short term I wouldn't put much uh, fruit in there because as I say it sucks the goodness moist uh, leaks out but if you were picking lettuce in the morning for you know your dinner or your supper which is dinner at the night I don't know what they call it here in Wales we call it supper anyway supper dinner or even if it was just you know for your sandwiches the day the following day you could put it in the free fridge and just keep it cool um you know you've got that sort of aspect of the fridge you know um, berries i suppose just bung them in pull them out eat them as you want the next one is well this is an additional one just seeing the onions over there is curing and hanging up to dry so you can do this with a few different stuff onions shallots garlic um you know even down to the nitty-gritty you could buy lavender bunch it up herbs any sort of herbs rosemary mint you can bunch it up and use it as and when you need it and that's just from simply just laying it out to dry flat tying it into a little bundle and tying it up and that'll be sufficient um, you know you can then go the extra step and let it dry for a few days and then you could smash it up in one of those little pestle and mortars or put it through a food processor and do it into a powder a herb powder like a seasoning which is what we do we powder all ours and put it in jars just for convenience because if you're hanging herbs up in the house chances are they're going to get cobwebs on or you get knocked off the hook or you know a whole host of different reasons why it's better for us than to put in jars but maybe for you it'd be easier to just grab off the hook a whole dried sprig and just crunch it into your food as and when you need it and you know that'd be better than not having mint at all i think is having dried um powders ready to go now the old technique of storing root vegetables this is mainly is a root clamp now that's just where you dig a you put your veg out and you put earth over it and you put more and, and then you put straw or hay down it but i have also seen root clamps where you dig a slight trench you put straw or hay your veg but they're only touching each other in the layer 
and you put more hay or straw and then that layer so the layers aren't touching but the veg between layers can it doesn't matter too much and then straw and then more and then you put all the earth that you've had out of that little trench up over the top and that then acts as like you could pack it down you just hit it with a shovel and make it firm and then all the water runs off but a bit so it keeps it nice and cool and just sufficiently moist just to keep the veg from going dry and you know starting to lose moisture because of osmosis if it's a dry environment the moisture is going to get wicked out of the veg but if it's a wet environment then you're going to have the opposite effect where your veg is going to start to rot because it's sitting in wet you know damp wet conditions so you just want to it's going to control it a bit better if you've got a root clamp because it breathes unlike if I buried a plastic barrel in the soil then you'd, it's, it's all the moisture's locked in there so it's going to end up pooling on the floor if anything rots and then the bottom's going to rot out not the barrel but all the veg on the bottom so that's the end of this video and that's the end of this week's the series um, Tomorrow now, I'll get the questions all done that I have over the course of the week. And tomorrow, well, Sunday then, um, all these videos are going to go into a Q&A. Uh, all these questions, sorry, all of them will go into a Q&A and I'll get the Q&A sorted and uploaded on Sunday. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope again to see you next time. Bye for now.